Welcome everybody, this is Tony Porter, Cards and Dice, and today we are playing a payoff pitch game. 1964 season is the one that I chose to uh, replay Joe Pepitone's Yankee season. And um, it is the Yankees at um, Fenway Park in Boston, so we're going to switch that with the Yankees on top. And they're going to be facing a um, pitcher called Bill uh, Mambake or Mom Bucket, and the Yankees are going to um, give the ball to Bob Mayer. He's a lefty, so we got a righty versus a lefty. And the lineup for the Yankees is going to be Pedro Gonzalez, Bobby Richardson, Roger Maris, Mickey Mantle, fifth is Tresh, sixth is Pepitone, seventh is Howard, eighth is Cleve Boyer, and ninth is the pitcher card. Now, this is going to be a three-inning tutorial, and there's certain things I want to stress. Stolen bases, uh, runner advance, bunting, hit and run, and the double play. So I should be able to hit on all those things. And the first thing I'll go for, of course, is the stolen base. I'll try to do them in that order if possible. I don't know that I will be able to do that. So let's get started. The way you play payoff pitch is going to roll 2d6, and we'll grab those 2d6. You can add them. And then what we're going to, those are actually double D6s. And you can find those on double D6.com. And then we're going to roll um, a red and a white. And that is what we'll read off the batter card. So I'm going to remove one team so I can focus more clearly on just one team. And I just want to bring the camera just a little bit closer here. So there's been a lot of questions on the forum as of late regarding this. So I want to do that. And uh, okay, here's Mon Monbiquet, and the Yankee batter is Pedro Gonzalez. So I will be keeping a scorecard on the side, and then I'm going to input this later into um, Replay Baseball PC game that tracks all my stats for me, so I don't have to do it. All right, so let's roll the 2 to 6 and add them to get the pitcher result. That's an 8. That's going to be in place. So we're going to be looking at the in place section against the righty, which is the right side. Pretty simple. It's an 85. I know automatically that um, that in play usually doesn't go that high. It's going to be an 85, which is a ground ball to shortstop. So that's a quick result, and it's G6. And the next batter is Bobby Richardson. I just write it exactly how it's written there, P6, G6, and so on and so forth. All right, Bobby Richardson's up. We're going to throw for the pitcher, and that is a 10, which is patient. So we're going to look on the patient against a righty. All the way up to 42 is something that he gets on base, but he does not because I roll a 69. And a 69 is going to be chopped to the second baseman and gloved by the second baseman. And he throws out Bobby Richardson, two down. Next batter is Roger Maris. All right, again, we're going to do the same thing. Throw for the pitcher. That is going to be a five, which is a tough pitch. Let's see what... Maris can do it, and a tough 45 is going to be a little ground ball through the right side for base hit single. And here's where we're going to do, we'll do a couple things. So Maris is on with a single. And uh, he's going to try to steal, so we're going to look at his steal. Now his steal is an A. What does that mean? Well, let me explain it to you. You see, wow, it doesn't it's real blurry. I noticed it's real blurry. Okay, for some reason. Maybe it's the, the plastic. I don't know. Let's see if I remove the plastic, if you can see it better. Or maybe I'm just seeing it blurry. I don't know. All right, so uh, here you have A. Steel is A. So he is a top-notch stealer. Now, you have to look at then the catcher's uh, number, right? The catcher's arm rating, uh, Tillman, is a forearm. So a forearm, let's take a look on the, this is where you have to kind of learn the steel chart a little bit. So a 4A or a, a um, an A4 is going to be excellent opportunity to steal. See that? It's all the way at the top. So basically you want catcher's arm ratings to be lower, like Elston Howard has a two arm rating. 
So he has an excellent chance, an A4 is an excellent chance of stealing a base. But first, I'm going to try to get the, the jump, right? So on Roger Maris, to get the jump, you get you have to roll a – ah, he has no, no real jump rating. Um, usually there's a number there. Let me show you. You see like a 2C? Well, Roger Maris doesn't have a jump rating at all. So I, there is a, a very uh, – that's unusual to see that without a jump rating. So um, I, I really don't know how to handle the no jump rating. Um, and that's, I guess, because then he would have 100 stolen bases if he stole all the time. So I'm not sure what the rule is to that. It's very – it'll be the only card in the deck that has that. You see, he has a 2C. He has a 3A. Oh, another one without a jump rating. And another one, a 2B and a 3C. So there's actually, this is a 64 set. You usually don't see that in the more modern sets. All right, so we'll just jump to somebody like, like Mickey Mantle, who has a 2C. It's much. We'll just say that Mickey Mantle's on base, because that's the only one I know. I've never really run into that other issue. Uh, so a 2C is going to put him, or a C2 is going to put him under fair. You see that? So Mantle is going to steal under fair. He was uh, he had six stolen bases, on uh, with nine attempts. So in this case, with the catcher's arm, catcher's arm is a four, so actually not a two because the two would be um, is Elston Howard, but Mantle is stealing against um, Tillman. So Tillman is a is a four, so a C four takes takes uh, Mickey Mantle to very good. So you're going to pull a very good here. We're going to look for very good. We're going to pull the card, and on the right side it says stealing. Under very good it says safe. Now it doesn't always say safe. It could change. This one says safe all the way up and down. This one says out under very good. So he would be out, and uh, the catcher Tillman throws out uh, Mickey Mantle under the 2C. So that's basically how you do that. Now, a lot of times what I'll do is without even checking anything, I'll just pull the card. And if I know it, usual catches are threes. Arm ratings are threes, and usually the base runner is a C. So a 3C is going to be normal. That one I have memorized. right? Or a C3 is going to be a normal, you see. So if I know that both have that sort of thing, and that's normally that's the norm, I'm going to pull a card, and he's out all the way around. I know that. Mickey Mantle is not a not excellent. So I won't have to use the chart because, look, he's out all the way down. All right? Because if I know that the catcher's card, let's say the catcher's arm is a three and Mickey Mantle is a, is a C, I know that's going to be in the middle somewhere. And this is all the way – he's only safe on an excellent, which would, you know, it would require him to be like a Lou Brock or a Ricky Henderson or somebody like that, somebody, you know, that's super outstanding. And Mickey Mantle just uh, is not that. All right, so that's the base running aspect of the game. So I wasn't able to do it with um, I wasn't able to do it with this. But I got to look and see what that. Uh, it was explained to me one time, but I never bothered because I never really saw it until I started rolling playing um, 1964, and I just started. This is like my fifth game of the season, sixth game of the season, and I really don't try to steal much with certain guys like this guy. I would not try to steal with, generally speaking. Um, you could also just elect to have him run. You don't have to roll for the jump. That is, uh, so you just say, "Hey, Roger Maris is going to steal," and you pull a card, right? And he's going to be. He's. Uh, we said he's an A, and Tillman is a four, so a an A four. He is excellent, and we pull a card, and excellent. He is safe, so he steals a base. But I would, I would not, you know, I would try to play it realistically and know that he's only going to try to steal. Once every um, basically 50 games, okay, because he only has three stolen bases. In um, you know, he played about 100, let's say 140, 150 games. So, you know, that's not a realistic guy, but just to show you to demonstrate it, that's why I chose uh, Roger Maris to steal with. Okay, so this one, I really there is a, definitely a rule, and we got to ask on the forum. Uh, what that rule is when there's no number there. Usually there's a number on most players, but since this is 64, it's a little bit unusual because it's not really a time where they steal a lot of bases. 
Um, well, you know, and you're going to find that every set and payoff pitch is a little bit different, and he adjusted a little bit different to the tendencies in that season. All right, so Maris singles, and the next batter is going to be Mickey Mantle. So let's see what else we can get to happen here. That's an eight, and that's going to be an in play. Oh, that's going to be a 19, in play 19. That's a base hit. Now, this is runner advancement. So let me write down the things that I cover in this tutorial. So I covered stolen base. Now let me cover runner advancement. So the first thing you do with the fact is pull a fact and see what it says. So it's a single, right? So runner advances uh, one base. But wait, if, if the runner is a six or better, that could override it. And he's a seven, so Roger Maris will make it to third. So first and third, Mantle singles. And up comes Tom Trash. He's a switch hitter, so he bats lefty. That makes no difference. It's the side of the pitcher, and Mong Bouquet is a righty. All right, so we're doing good so far. Hey, Patrick, how are you, brother? All right. So it's Tresh versus Mom Bouquet. And um, let me write Tresh in. All right, so here we're going to roll the 2D6 to get what roll off the – it is a 10. That's going to be a patient result. So we're looking at the patient, the yellow on the Tresh. And that's a 32, 32 patient is a base on balls. And that's going to load the bases. So that loads the bases for guess who? Joe Pepitone. That's the guy I read the book. Joe, you could have made us proud. And he was always sidetracked. He never he, he was a, an excellent talent. Uh, not a great hitter for average, but he had good power. He had good speed. He won three gold gloves, but uh, he was not focused. And he really um, wasted a lot of his ability. He never really dedicated himself to learning more. It's just he was a natural at, at the game. And he's he steps to the plate with the bases loaded. Yes, sir. E. Bases are loaded against Mont Bouquet here at Fenway Park. And I got the ballpark card up here. That's one thing I'm not covering in this video. Once I cover the five points, then that's going to be it. So uh, let's do this. Let's roll for the pitcher's card. Here's a pitch. And that is a six, which is a tough. So we're going to go to the blue. And that is an 88. That's a fly, uh, ground ball, second base, chopped to the second baseman up the middle. And he gets there, steps on the bag, and that's a force out to end the inning. And it's a four, gets Tresh, and the Yanks leave the bases loaded. So it's just a ground out, and I made it into a force out. There's nothing, there's no, you know, specific anything about that, just so you know. All right, so here is going to be, um, let's see, Bob Mayer, Yankees lefty pitcher versus Chuck Schilling. We're starting off, and we're going to do the same thing. So let's write in Schilling. And Schilling is a second baseman. Actually, I wrote on the All right, and here's the pitch. First, we got to roll on the pitcher card, and that is a, a six, and that is in play. So that's going to be the, the white, gray, white in play right down here against the lefty. So it's on the left side. You got to remind yourself of doing that. It's a zero one. So that's going to be a drive, and that's going to roll all the way to the wall. And Schilling around first, digging for second. Here's the throw from Mantle, the tag, and he is safe with a double, a leadoff double by Chuck Schilling, the Red Sox, second baseman. And here's Eddie Brousseau. Or Brousseau. That's, I think, how you pr pronounce it, Brousseau. He's a shortstop. All right, so let's try to bunt. All right, so that's the third, third thing on my list that I want to teach everybody how to do. Now, there's multiple ways of doing it, but I do it the simplest way. I look at his bunt rating. Remember, I don't overuse any of these tactics. I'm not that sort of person. 
if you're that sort of person, then you got to kind of look at the other systems in place. These guys have usually there's a number, a bunt number. It's not in here. Uh, that if you roll between that bunt number, uh, he gets the bunt. Oh, there it is. It's a two. So I would have to roll snake eyes for him to bunt. This is based on how many times he bunted during the year. Now, I'm not a big bunter. Normally, I wouldn't bunt with him. But for this, um, just because it's early in the game, I don't start bunting unless it's a very close game, like 3-3 in the seventh inning. Then I may bunt. All right. But that doesn't happen all the time. And I bunt with certain guys. And it's, it, you know, I'm not a big bunting guy, so I don't worry about that. But he's a B. Okay, great. That tells us. So I'm going to pull a card. That's how you do it. And you look at the bunt section. The bunt section is in the lower part of the card right there. And a B says sacrifice hit. It's a little number in front of the plate. There's only going to be one play. And that's going to be the first base. So it's going to be a 2-4 sacrifice. And that puts a runner on third with only one out. Okay, so it seems that the uh, manager for the Red Sox has decided to play for one run in this game for some reason against the lefty, Bob Mayer. All right, so it's Carl Yastrzemski. He's a lefty. Now the, the um, Yankees bring the infield in. So that's something I wasn't going to cover in this, but since it came up, you have the infield in chart, okay, right here, infield in, infield in. So you do have to use charts unless you can memorize all these or kind of paste them around your table. If you play a lot of payoff pitch, I would have them just pasted around my, my desktop, you know. I would put something on here and then paste it on top of that, like maybe uh, not glue it, but scotch tape it. So I just have a quick look there. I wouldn't have to pull charts. But you do, you're going to need that. So the infield's in. Let's see what happens. I, we're also going to teach you the um, runner advance chart here, which is another unique chart, which is this one right here, because there could be a fly ball, and then we could use this. Now, I don't use this because I have it memorized. All right, and this is more work for me. Okay, uh, this was done by a gamer. It's very, it's very helpful to guys that think this way. This confuses me more than helps me. All right, so, um, but I will teach you how to do that in a very simple way. Call Yastrzemski's up. Let's roll for the pitcher. And that is a nine. So we're going to be looking at, um, let me put Yaz in the scorebook, creating it as I go. That's a nine. So that's going to be a patient against a lefty. So 1 to 63, he's going to get on base in some way, shape, or form. So let's roll the 2D10. And that's a 15, and that is going to be a base on balls. So Mayer loses Yastrzemski, and Yastrzemski walks. Trots down to first. That puts runners on first and third. And up comes, who is it? It's going to be, let me make sure it's now zone coming up. Hold on. Yes, it is. Frank Malzone's up. Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna print out the uh, the chart real quick. The scorecard. You can print them out on uh, Replay Baseball. I'm going to just print it out. I click the pencil icon, and it will give me the opportunity to print that out. All right. So it's going to print out the scorecard. So it's Frank Malzone. He steps in the box. He's a righty facing the lefty against lefties. He bats 288. And there's first and third. Now, normally I play the – I'm going to do what I normally do um, and play the infield um, – medium halfway for the double play with first and third. I'm willing to give up that run to avoid a big inning and get out of the inning. I could get out of the inning with the double play. So if I don't get the double play, I'm fine with it. And there I'm printing out the score sheet so I don't make any mistakes. So I have a couple of different printers set up, one for cards and one for score sheets. And here you see Bal uh, Malzone and then Stewart and then Clinton are up. All right, so it comes out right away. All right, so let's do this. Let's roll. And the bases are loaded. Frank Malzone. Um, this creates a different situation. 
right now. Oh, no, it's first and third. I'm sorry. First and third, and it's Malzon. Yeah, it's just walked. And Malzon is playing what? He is playing third base. He's a third baseman. Yastrzemski's a left fielder. He's on a first. The third is shilling the second baseman. And we're going to play the infield back. I'll teach you how to do a double play if I get that opportunity. So this is going to be a nine. A nine is a patient again. A patient against the lefty is all the way to 64. And that's a 95. All right, perfect. Fly ball to left field. All right, so let's see. Fly ball to left field on a patient. The rules, I believe, say that you can, that's a choice. It's an automatic choice chart. So patient. My next chart's initial to the six roll. Um, you can use the, the, okay, to find out if it's, um, well, again, this was not created by me. It, it's easy if you're used to reading these, these things, but I have never looked at it. So I'm just going to explain it. Right now we're trying to find out. It's a fly ball to left field. There's a runner on third base. Let's look at the runner on third base's speed. You always got to know this is 101, right? You got to know his speed. He's a really, he has really good speed. He's an eight. Okay, so that's going to give us an advantage. Now to left field, the left fielder's arm rating, and the left fielder is um, Tommy Tresh. The left fielder's arm rating is a seven. Okay, so it's a big advantage here. So let me do this on paper so you can see. Outfielder's arm is a seven, and the base runner is an eight. Okay, so basically, what I do here is um, on the sack fly, let's see if it's written anywhere. Okay, runner advancement. Equal to or less than both, the runner is safe. So if equal to or less than both of these, first of all, I got to figure out if it's a deep fly ball or a short fly ball. That's the first thing before I start doing all that. Because a short fly ball would create a different situation where I would actually do um, minus two from the speed. So then he would become a six. All right. And then, of course, I would do a plus two, oh, plus two to the arm, and he would become a nine. So that would be um, more chance of him throwing him out and um, less of a chance of being automatically safe. There's actually he loses two points and automatically safe. So first of all, let's see what happens. Uh, it is kind of a fly. It's a deep fly ball, so you don't do any of this. So now we're going to – I roll the next two, right? I roll because I don't want to know the, the result already. So I'm going to roll here, and it's a six, so he it's less than eight, so he will be safe. All right, he's safe. So if it's um, – this we didn't come that didn't come into play because it's not a shallow fly ball. Now the rules don't uh, don't I don't think say anything what about that. What does say something about that and what helps you out with a short fly ball? Um, short fly ball right here. Um, I guess lead runner on first, lead runner on second, lead runner on third, tied or within one run. Um, so I, I don't use that, but you can try to figure it out. I didn't create that, um, but it's based on it's based on this whole idea. So basically, he scored. So it seems a lot more you know a lot more complicated than it is, but um, you know you could always opt out to not advance. I mean that would be the simplest way to just keep on playing. So as you go and as you learn a little bit better, you could advance. But that's going to be a sacrifice fly. So it's a deep fly ball to left field, trash on the track, and then to score is shilling. Now, I could try to uh, advance the runner at first base, but that's not realistic. 
So I'm not going to do that unless, of course, I want to say, okay, there's a throw to the plate. And you could say there was a throw to the plate. But Yaz is not particularly fast. I don't know that he would be advancing a lot on that sort of thing. So I try to play it realistically. He is a seven, so he is a good base runner. But then that's a whole nother combination of things. Sometimes I just make that automatic. If it's a, like a real fast base runner and it's a real important run and they're not going to cut it off because they definitely, you know, have a chance to get the guy. Um, uh, in that case, they didn't really have a chance. So they're probably going to cut it off and then they're going to keep Yaz at first base. That's a sacrifice fly. Uh, to left field, it's an RBI for Yastrzemski, for um, Malzone, and next is Dick Stewart. And Dick Stewart is playing first base. So there's two outs now, and there's a runner at first. Let's, again, we'll try to steal with the Yastrzemski. Um, he's a 2D, all right? And remember that uh, Elston Howard, Elston Howard is a two arm. Okay, so that's where again you got to go. I'm just going to pull a card and show you how I would do it. A two arm and a D. I know the runner. He's not a good base stealer. One, for him to steal, I'd have to roll snake eyes. And I, you know, the odds of that are very hard. So let's just say I did roll the snake eyes and I want to steal with him. Let's just say. All right. You don't have to do it that way. You could just say, hey, I'm trying to steal. But I like to do it that way. And I know I wouldn't steal with Yastrzemski too often because he only had 11 attempts in a 162-game schedule. So that's one every, what, you know, 15 games, I think, something like that, if I'm correct. Just doing off the top of my head math. Um all right, so if I'm going to try to steal with Yastrzemski, uh, he is a 2D, and uh, Elston Howard is a, a two-arm. That's that's a good arm. So it's probably in the lower half of the card. So I'm going to pull a card. I'm going to look, and he's going to be out. Look at this, out, out, out. He's got to be below normal. That's what some people say about me, and I'm below normal. All right, so let's look at the steal chart again. So it was a D2, and a D2 is poor. You see that? So he would be out because normal, fair, and poor are all out. So a D2, a D because Yastrzemski has a D on his card, and a 2 because Howard has a 2 arm on the Yankees. I'm not going to show you that. But it's down here, so he's going to get thrown out at second base. Now, did he, have, he did have a cat caught stealing, so he gets thrown out. And who's up? It's a righty, so it's 2-4. And that retires the side. So Yastrzemski's thrown out stealing. And we go to the top of the second inning. It's one nothing Red Sox. So I've covered a couple of things. Uh, let's see. I haven't done the hit and run. I haven't done the double play. Once I get those, the I'll finish this up. All right. The batter is Elston Howard. His arm rating, again, is a 2, and I've mentioned that various times. And it's uh, Mom, Mom Bucket or Mom Bucket um, at the plate, uh, on the mound, and Elson Howard's at the plate. Here's a pitch, and we're going to look. It's a 4 wheelhouse, so that's going to take us to Elson Howard's wheelhouse. 1 to 48, and that's going to be something. Let's see what we roll. And that is going to be a deep drive off the bat of Howard to left center field. Back goes the left fielder. Who is that out there? That's Yastrzemski to the track to the wall. And over the green monster it goes. It's out of here. Game is tied. Elston Howard with a wheelhouse, took a wheelhouse pitch from Mom Bouquet and and drove it deep to left field over the green monster for a home run. And the score is tied at one. All right, here's Cleve Boyer. Amazing third baseman, one of the top feeling third basemen. That's a 10. It's a patient. We're looking on the right side, yellow. The, the colors really are great, a great idea, and they really help. That's ground to short. Shortstop, Brousseau picks it up, or Brousseau picks it up, and over to first. So I write, I just write G6. And here's the pitcher, Mayer. 64, you pitcher's bat. 
Here's Mamba Cat. Let's roll to see what it is on the picture card. And that is a five. A five is going to be a tough and a tough 48. He is a one, so a tough 48. And that's a strikeout. And Mamba Cat strikes out the pitcher mayor for out number two. And here comes the top of the order. Pedro Gonzalez. Gonzalez uh, grabbed it out in his first at bat. That's Richardson. Let's get Gonzalez. Nobody's on base here. The game is tied at one apiece. So this gives you a fun game. It's real easy to play. That's a nine. Um, a nine is in play. So we're looking at this white section right here against a righty. One to, 30, one to 35, and we roll a 12, and that's going to be a line shot to left center field and cut off by Yastrzemski and left gets it in to the shortstop, Brousseau, and that's a two-out single for Gonzalez, Pedro Gonzalez versus righties. He batted 268. He only had 112 at-bats. And we're not going to steal with him, but he is a 4-D. So that means on a, a roll of 2-2 two -two or 1-3, he would get a chance to steal. He would not steal. And really, the way I play it is whenever I see anything low, I would look, I look like let's say I'm just rolling and rolling and so on, and I see it's a four, I would automatically, instinctively just look and see if there's a runner on base and what his steal rating is, and then I consider do I want to steal. That's kind of the way I play it to not really worry about it. So it's Bobby Richardson. There's two outs. I'm not going to do a hit and run, unfortunately. Um, I can't do a bunt here, and, I, and there's no double play, so. We're just going to roll. We'll use that 2-2. Two, two. That's a 4. Oh, no. Here, this is the roll. And that's a 10, and that is a patient. Patient versus a righty. Let's see what happens. All the way to 42. It's a 91. 91 is ground ball to short. We're going to just make it a 6-4 fearless choice. Normally, it is a few. Oh, that's an 11. No, it's a throw to first. But with two outs, it really doesn't matter. It just ends the inning. Usually, I just throw to first with two outs. But the Yanks pick up a run, and the score is 2-1. to one. Uh, 1 1, excuse me. 1 1 going to the bottom of the second. All right. We still got to do a couple things to hit the, the double play and the hit and run. As soon as I get a guy on base, I will do a, a hit and run. So here's the pitch from the lefty mayor. You got to remind yourself to look on the left side. I do that just the way I'm explaining it. That's going to be doubles. It's going to be in play. So in play is in the white. And a 20 is going to be line base hit left field, a rope off the bat of Stewart, and he's on at first, so he'll it'll be an opportunity to do a hit and run here. Perfect. Next batter is Clinton. Now, let me give you a hint. Don't do a hit and run with a guy who strikes out a lot, and he strikes out a whole lot. So this is not the guy to do a hit and run with. So let me do uh, – well, there's a lefty there, 1-64. to 64. I'm going to do it with Conigliaro. I'm not going to do the hit and run with Clinton. So Conigliaro will be next, and he's better. Because you don't want to do it with a guy who strikes out a lot because it's not going to work out for you. <laughs> you don't want to do that. Because remember, it's not a real straight-up steal attempt. It doesn't have a good lead. It's just running. So you got to keep that in mind. All right, so here goes. It's a four. And a four is going to be a patient on the left side. One to 50 It's going to be something. And a zero, zero is going to be a rare play with a runner on first. That forces you to go to the chart. So there's some situations where you got to look at the chart. And I'm just going to use the four that I rolled and as a scorching line drive to third base. If range is A or B, and I believe Cleve Boyer does have A or B range because he is one of the top fielding third basemen probably of that era. He does have a B range. So, and we roll the four. There it is. The four says scorching line drive, A or B range, catches the ball, records as many outs as possible. So he's going to throw to second for one, back to first, and that's a double play. What a what a play by Cleet Boyer. So five, four, three, double play. They turn it. Actually, on a scorching line drive, he just throws to first base. He doesn't go to second. So it's a five, five, three, double play. Two out, and here comes Tony Conigliaro. So I took care of a double play, at least one double play. 
I'd like to do one other double play, but we'll see what happens. Here's Canigliaro. He's going to roll. Now I'm going to roll them all together. And it's a three. It's a tough, a tough 58 against a lefty, tough 58. And that is just beyond the base hit range. That is going to be a fly ball right field. Out there is Maris. And he settles under it, makes the catch, and that retires the side. Canigliaro is a center fielder. And Clinton is a right fielder. Right fielder, center fielder. And we go to the top of the third. There's still a couple things I want to cover. All right, it's going to be Maris against Mambaquet. And um, now I could I could use, instead of rolling, you don't have to roll. You could just use the fast action cards. So I got a six. A six is a tough. And then I, I'm going to pull a card for the next number, an 81, right? So a six was a tough, and an 81 is going to be out here, and that's a fly ball in the, in the gap. And after it is the center fielder, Canigliaro, and he – Runs it down. What a got a good jump on that ball right 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 off the bat. A ball that was driven to right center field, and Canigliaro catches up to it. One away. Here's Mickey Mantle. So again, I'll use the card, fast action card. That's a seven. That's an in play in play against a righty. You're looking here. That's a seventy-seven, and that's not going. That's beyond. And that's going to be again a fly ball. But this is. Lifted high into center. And again, Canigliaro makes both out so far. And again, we're going to go for the card. That's a 12. 12 is in play. Again, in play against a righty. We're going to pull a card. That's a 60. And that's beyond the 29. A 60 is a fly ball to right this time. And Maris towards the line. And that retires the side. Three up, three down. That was an easy inning. All right, next is uh, the bottom of the third inning. It's going to be Tillman, Mambaquet, and Schilling, the second baseman. So let's do that. Let's keep on using the fast action cards of five, a tough against a lefty. So I look on this. I always got to double check that. It's a 79. That's going to be a fly ball at the center, Mickey Mantle. Tracks it down. So Tillman flies out. Now, the nice thing about playing these older seasons is they aren't always, you know, there, there's a lot of lower scoring um, ball games, which is nice to have. All right. Uh, let's see. Schilling, I need to have a uh, Mambaquet is a three batting. So I have to look at my pitcher batting cards. Let me see if I have those somewhere here. Here they are. Pitcher batting card. He is a three. So so I have, there's a three. Pitcher hitting card three. All right. So uh, Mom Bouquet. And here we're going to roll. Bob Mayer checks the sign with Elston Howard. He sets and winds and deals. That's a five. That's a tough, a tough 24. And the tough 24 is strike three, so Mambaquet strikes out. And that's two out. And here's the top of the order. Chuck Schilling, Bob Mayer, wines and deals. And that is a seven. A seven is a patient and a 90. A patient 90 is a fly ball to left field. A few steps back is Tresh, and he makes the catch three up and three down. So we go top of the fourth. It's one one game. So we got a good game here now. No, I have three sets of fast action cards, so I would change it every three innings. In this case, I'm not going to change them. I'm not using them all the time. But leading off is going to be Joe Pepitone. So we're going to use go back to the fast action cards, and you can do that. Just switch it up. That's an eight in play. And in play eighty eight against a righty, and that is a, he's ripped the second base, gloved by Schilling. Over to first, one down. Elston Howard is next. We'll roll for Elston Howard. And that's a four wheelhouse and a 39. Wheelhouse 39 versus a righty. And that's going to be, it could have been his second home run, but instead it's going to be line shot to left center field, cut off by the center fielder Canigliaro. And he gets it into the shortstop, 
for Sue. And uh, Howard is on it first. Now, Howard's not a guy who steals, so I'm not going to worry about it. And it's Cleve Boyer, right-handed hitter. Cleve Boyer hit uh, eight home runs. Versus right, he's bats 204. I'm going to pull a card this time. That's an eight. An eight is in play. In play, 98. Can so righty in play, 98. And it's a fly to left. And here is the pitcher, Mayer. He's a one. This time we'll roll. And that's a six and an 80. I know that's going to be a tough 80. That's a strikeout. And that retires the side. They leave one score, none. One, one after three and a half. Elston Howard. So is Howard. All right. Again, this is a payoff pitch tutorial. The older seasons are better. See, if you want to learn the game, I would pick up probably an older season first that I like because it's much easier. There's a fewer changes because if I have to be changing everybody, then it gets a little bit crazed uh, if you're just brand new to learning this game. So, again, I'm going to just play with the facts. It's the best way to do it. It's a tough, and I'm going to roll. I'm going to pull for the – and it's a double zero now. This is a homebrew of mine. I don't look at the um, rare. This is a rare play number. I don't look at the rare plays because, with nobody on base because it's mostly injuries, and I don't play injuries. So I turn it into a defense. So the way I play defense, and that wasn't included in my tutorial, but it, now it will be. Right, The way I play defense is basically I just pull a card. That's the only thing I do. Watch, watch. I play defense, 86. That's a real high number. Guess what? Nothing's going to happen. Okay, and I'm very seldom wrong. The highest you can get for a hit is a 70. The highest you can get for an error is a 56. I got an 86, so I don't have to worry about it. But then you're going to say to yourself, well, what happened? Who who's the ball hit to? Well, you pull another card, and you look right here. Third base. Normally it would be an error, but there's no error because the roll was too high. So I don't have to worry. It's a ball that the third baseman, Cleet Boyer, handles and fires to first and gets pursue one out. That's a very easy and fast way to handle defense. Okay, you don't have to do a lot of calculations. If the number falls like a 49, then there's a chance both for a, a, a range hit and an error uh, hit or error uh, uh, a reach. So let's see what happens. So let's just say I roll the 49 on the error check. So then I'm going to see who the ball is hit to and what it is. So it's going to be an error check on the shortstop. Then I would check the shortstop. Remember, you leave the 49 showing so you can remember it's a 49. Uh, shortstop is in this one. Oh, Cleet Boyer is it. Okay. So in this game, actually, Cleve Boy was at shortstop, and Gonzalez was at third base. I never bothered to look at that, you know, because I've been worried about showing the game. But uh, Cleve Boyer at short is a four error. We roll the 49. Let's see where the four error range is. The four error, one to 28. We roll the 49. See, the 49 is what we pulled. So that's going to be above the error, so there's no error there either. Okay, so that's the couple ways that you would play that. Now, you got to check the lineups before you start the game, which I didn't do because I was just kind of filling out the scorecard as I to just keep track. So we gave a free double play, Gonzalez. Let's see what Gonzalez is at third base. No way he's going to be. Yeah, he's a C range. So he wouldn't have made that double play earlier, but that's okay. It's not the end of the world. We're going to keep on playing. You live and you learn. So, yeah, Yastrzemski's up. And then Malzone. So there is one out in the bottom of the fourth inning. We're going to pull a card. It's going to be a six. A six is in place. So we're looking down here against a lefty. And we're going to look at the top right at 84. That is a fly ball center field. On the run is Mantle, and he 
tracks it down. So Jastrzemski gave it a ride, but Mantle was there. Malzone with two outs. That's a six. That's in play. We're looking here against the lefty, and that's a 42. It goes up to 30. So 42 is going to be chopped to the first baseman. Pepitone who steps on the bag, and that retires the side. We go to the fifth inning. 1-1 one, one the score. All right, so I've taught a couple of things here. I've even gone over. I've done a little defense as well. So I've done defense. I still have to do a hit and run. And I've done a double play, but it was really a rare play double play, which I messed up on. I got it. I explained it right, but it was not Cleet Boyer a third. But we'll just say it was that Cleet Boyer, uh, it was hit the Cleet Boyer towards the left, to, towards the third base side of the bag. So he got it instead of um, the third baseman. But he was, you know, with all the shifts and, and all that, you could just say that one guy was guarding the line, Cleet Boyer was moved over, and Cleet Boyer was the one who got it. And he was at the third base position, so he was able to turn it. Anyway, you can make up whatever scenario you want to justify the, the little mistake that you made. Just make it an anomaly or a rare play in the story. Uh, don't worry about it. Uh, Gonzalez. Pedro Gonzalez is one for two. So we're going to – here's Mabaquette, and the pitch is a six, and that's a tough – a tough 61, and that's a strikeout. So it, it, this is really a, an easy, fast game to play. You know, there's not a lot of complications – the few things that are seem a little bit complicated barely maybe come up once a game and they're not really complicated. Once you just get the flow and you understand the thinking behind the game, it's easy to do. That's a tough. A six is a tough. We look here versus a righty, and that's a 10, and that's a strikeout. So back to back K's, and that's a guy who's tough to strike out, Bobby Richardson. Extremely tough to strike out, but Mont Paquette is dealing right now. He retired four in a row, and here comes Roger Maris. Roger Maris could change things with one swing of the bat. That's a two. That's a ballpark. So the ballpark card, and that's against a lefty batter to 1-43 to at Fenway Park. So the righties have a better crack at it. 1-43, to let's pull a card. And that's an 18, so it is going to be wheelhouse. So it falls within that 1-43. to It goes to a wheelhouse versus a righty, 1-58. to And Roger Maris drives one deep to right center field. And uh, let's see what happens. We're going to pull a card, and it's a 34. So Roger Maris swings and drives one deep to right center field, and back goes the right fielder. And who is that out there? That is Canigli. Oh, no, that is Clinton to the track. Looks up. That's out of here. It's a solo shot by Roger Maris, and the Yanks go up 2-1. to one. So this is a, a really it's a really fun game. I highly recommend it. It's very easy to read. Actually, the modern cards are even easier to read because he's enlarged all the font. So, the, for example, in the 72 season, I think there's one other season, the 86 season, I think he, he enlarged the font. <clears throat> all right. Here's a pitch, and that's a nine. And that's an in play. In play, we're looking one to 24, and it's a 40. So that is going to be grounded at first. First baseman is Stewart. He steps on the bag, and that retires the side. So one run on one hit, the Yankees lead it. We go to the bottom of the fifth. Well, the Yankees had an outstanding record. That's one thing I'd like to see on these cards is the team record. I don't, I'm not in favor of a lot of things on the cards, but I would like to see the team record, just so you know if it's a good team or a bad team. So you don't have to look it up. So the Yankees, now let's look at the fatigue. The fatigue is six here, and Mambaquette is an eight. So in the sixth, he becomes fatigued if he's given up at least three runs, and that's not the case for either. So I don't have to worry about that right now. All right, and it's an effective system. It's an efficient system. I think he's changing it. I asked him to please at least leave the system he has in place for guys that don't want to change. I'm okay with changing, but some guys don't want to change. Uh, and it's a simple system to, to – once it gets sick, uh, six, the sixth inning rolls around, he's given up three or more runs, you bring in the fatigue pitcher card. And it works. It's a, it's a pretty cool system. All right. Here's a pitch from Bob Mayer. He winds and deals to Dick Stewart, and that is going to be a four. A four is a patient. Remember, we're looking at the left-handed pitcher side and a 41. And a 41 on the patient – is a drive down, and it's driven, and it's going to split the outfielders and roll to the wall. 
and playing it off the wall is Mantle. The throw to second, not in time. So it's a leadoff double by Dick Stewart. And let's just check his speed. His speed is a six. Lou Clinton. Now, what am I missing? Um, hit and run. All right, so we're going to go back to dice rolling now just to mix it up, keep it interesting. That's an eight, and eight is a tough. So we're looking at tough versus, and that is a 48. Strike three on Clinton. He swings and misses. Chases a curveball in the dirt. And here's Canigliaro. Tony Canigliaro. And that is a nine. A nine is a patient. A 93 versus a lefty. A patient 93. And that is a fly to left field. Now, I don't usually advance on flies to left field unless it's a very, very speedy runner. Stewart is a six, not really a super speedy runner. If it's a really speedy runner and I check and it's a deep fly, you can advance. It will be a short fly to left field, and you're probably going to get thrown out. You could still try, but chances are you get thrown out or you don't even try it. You hold. So it's uh, one, two outs now, and uh, there's no tag there with a runner at second base, and now it's Tillman. Now, had that been to right field, I would potentially try it especially if, if there's only one out. I don't want to make the third out of third base either. Here's the pitch to Tony Canigliaro with two out, runner on second. And that is a four, a patient, a patient 37 against a lefty, and that's a base hit single, and a six. He's a six base runner. That's why, why I checked that the game's going to be tied. Little ground ball hit up the middle, and around third comes Stewart. He'll score. And I, I'm looking at Canigliaro, but it should be Tillman. Hold on. Hold on. Just notice that in my box score. Canigliaro flied out. So Tillman, it was a four, which was a patient, and a patient against a lefty and a 37 is going to be a base on balls. So the game is not tied. Lucky I noticed that. That's why I have all these checks. So runner, now it's going to be a base on balls. And that's going to bring up the pitcher, Mambiquette. These are pitcher, pitcher hitting card three. And we're going to pull a card. It's going to be a four, a patient. So a patient, we're looking here, one to 30, and it's an 83. That's going to be a ground ball to short. Flips to the second baseman. I just kind of make that up, six to four, and that retires the side because that is the last out. It doesn't really matter. And you move on. I was one hit, two left on. And we go to the top of the sixth, a two to one Yankees lead. All right, in the top of the sixth, it's going to be Tommy Tresh, Pepitone, and Howard. And we're going to continue pulling cards. Here goes. Let's pull it to 12. That's in play. So against a righty, we're looking 1 to 29. We got a 19, so that's going to be line base hit. Right center field. Tresh is on a little leadoff single. Pepitone doesn't strike out much. So we're going to try a hit and run. 1 to 24, that's pretty low. So we're going to try a hit and run with Pepitone. So that's going to take that off my mark for my tutorial, hit and run. And for hit and run, first of all, um, we're going to pull a card. Um, let's pull a card. It's a 7. It's in play because we got to get a number. In play. It's an in play 29. And that is going to be... 29 is a pop-up. So I don't have to look at the chart. See? <laughs> All right. So Puppetone, unfortunately, pops up. Okay. So there goes the runner, and he pops it up. Here's Howard. Howard also doesn't strike out that much. 40 is not too good, but I'm still going to try another hit and run just to teach you. So, again, um, I'm going to pull a card. That's an 8. It's in play. In play versus a righty. It's a 67. A 67 is a ground ball to second base. All right. And that's going to be a runner advance, just like that. Now, there is a chance for a double play on a four if you roll a four or less. So we didn't roll that. The number we pulled earlier was an eight, right, because that was a, a roll from earlier. But I could roll, and on a four or less, it could be a double play, and it's a six. So um, that doesn't happen very often, all right? 
So it is a ground ball to second base, runner advances. So we got another runner in scoring position because we hit and run. But, and let me show you where that is just to – because I know sometimes I move a little bit fast and I don't go that deeply into things. It's kind of one of the, some of the ways I do things. And I, all right. That's why I do them again and again. All right. So here um, – all right, so if I had been a wheelhouse and it was, uh, I believe I rolled an eight, an eight was in play. If wheelhouse or patient, you look on the result number, you look down here. So batter's DP rating is four during hit and run. Runners advance an, an extra base on all hits. Line outs are double plays. If a batter strikes out, lead runner must attempt a stolen base. And I use, of course, the worst possible um, chance, the lowest rating possible on a stolen base. If that happens, let me write that on in there. Lowest rating. All right. So that that's your hit and run chart, but you don't have to look at it because it's a fly out or a pop up. You don't have to worry about it. land drive is double play, ground ball unless it's a four. It's not. It's just going to be a runner moves up. Um. And what else could happen? On a single, he gets an extra base. That's it. So you don't really have to look at the chart for that. It's just common sense. So next, here's Elston Howard. We're going to roll this time. And that is a nine. A nine is an in play. So we're going to look at a nine up to in play is up to 34. That's a zero seven. That is line base hit. And this will score him if he's a six. Tresh. I believe Tresh is a six. And the Yanks take a three to one lead. Tresh is a seven. He'll be waved around third. Throw to the plate. Not in time. Howard, not really super fast. So you're not going to give him the extra base. He holds it first with an RBI. And the Yanks are up three to one. Cleve Boyer. So the only thing I have left to do is a double play. Even though I have done one, but that was a rare double play. Uh, I've done the bunt, I've done the advance, I've done the stolen base. And um, if you want that chart that I showed, that flow chart, just send me your email. You can reach out to me on this on this video. All right, here's four, and that's a wheelhouse. So we're going to go to Cleet War, uh, Boyer's wheelhouse against a right-handed pitcher, one to 14 is a homer. And that is a 46. I had to look under there. I hate when that happens. But it is a 46. All right. That kind of throw it a little bit harder. So a 46 is going to be outside of the range, and that is a ground ball to third. Third baseman, Malzone, picks it up, throws out. Oh, wait a second. Perfect. There's only one out. There was a runner on first, so this is a chance for a double play. All right. So that's, that's the last thing on my list. Let's cross it off so we can talk about the double play. So you got to look at two double play numbers. You're going to look at Cleet Boyer's, uh, Boyer's double play number, which is a six. So the batter is a six, and the pitcher is an eight. So anything six or less, right, six or less is going to be a, um, a double play. Okay, anything six or less is a double play. And let's pull a card. Let's see what happens. It's a three, so it is a double play. It's going to be a 5-4-3 double play. Now, if it is um, anything above, like a seven, an eight, anything above a six, it's going to be a fielder's choice. If it's an 11 or a 12, it's going to be just an advance. All right? That's how we play it. So from seven, eight, nine, 10, it's an advance, okay? And an 11 and 12, and that's it. So I think I did everything I wanted to do here. So I'm just gonna finish up the game off camera. And I hope this helps you. Um, you know, I, the only one I feel that is, is a, you see, let me let me go over, let me do a separate video on the fly balls again. But I do have one already, so I don't think I need to do it again. But sometimes you do it a second time, you do it better. Sometimes you do it worse. I think the best um, 
explanations are sometimes the, the, the simpler ones when you really simplify it and then uh, people fill in the gaps. Um, and if they have questions, they ask questions. But this is Tony Porter. This is Cards and Dice TV. Uh, this is the ultimate tutorial series. We're really in depth on um, payoff pitch. I hope it helped you guys. Um, and um, and what, where are we here? We're in the bottom of the sixth inning. And I guess, you know what? I'll finish this out. It's a good game. And if I get a chance to uh, do another fly ball, I will. And I will continue to, it will take a little bit because I will continue to do the And it's Chuck Schilling, um, the second baseman for the Red Sox. It's three to one here at Fenway Park. We are at Fenway Park in Boston. And here's the pitch from Mayer. It's an eight, and eight is a tough, a tough 59. He's a lefty. And that is going to be a ground ball to second. Second baseman Bobby Richardson throws out Schilling. Uh, Schilling. Here's Bursu. And we're going to roll dice. So if you roll dice and you pull cards, you don't have to change cards. I do have three decks of uh, they're they're not expensive, they're about eight dollars. Uh, three if you buy them like in groups, that's a three pitcher three, and that's a tough, a tough twenty seven, a tough twenty seven. is strike three, and Bruce is out, strikes out. Maybe you get some on a curveball, and here's your your Stremski with two outs, and we're gonna roll again. And that's a six. They didn't play 32 against a lefty, and that's going to be a base hit. He strokes one to right field. And Yastrzemski's got a two-out single. And what can we do? We can't do anything with two outs. So here's Bobby Mayer. Sets and deals to Malzone. And that is a 10. A 10 is in play. And a six, an in play 61 versus a lefty is a ground ball second base. Over to first. And Richardson throws out Malzone, and uh, and that retires the site. We go to the top of the seventh. So both starters are there now. Um, remember that Mabuquet becomes tired in the eighth, and then I'm going to replace him with. I'll try to get him to go the complete game. I will replace him with a uh, with a. Pitcher fatigue card. Here's the the uh, mayor's up a pitcher, and he's a one. All right, that is off the pitcher. It's a six. It's a tough. That's going to be a strikeout, and it is. Next is Pedro Gonzalez. Pedro is one for three. He grounded out, singled, and struck out. And that is a 7 and an 81. A 7 is in play. 81 is a fly ball center field. Canigliaro there. Holds it in for two outs. And here's Bobby Richardson. Richardson's 0 for 3. He grounded out twice and struck out. And that is a 9 or a 9 is in play. And a 79. An in play 79. And that is a fly. Shallow fly to center racing in. Is Canigliaro going back as a shortstop in the second baseman, Schilling and Brousseau. Watch out. And this, the center fielder makes the catch. Let's see. What was it? Uh, 79. Yep, center fielder makes the catch. So he made all three putouts. Oh, actually, no. That was – now it's Maris. Maris is up. There's two out. There's only – that was the third out. That's what I thought. Okay. So, no, he, he made two putouts, and the first batter struck out. So here you go. This is the seventh inning stretch, bottom of the seventh inning. So we still have Bobby Meyer or Mayer in there facing Stewart. Second, trying to get the sound back on there. A little, little background um, crowd noise. I like to have that. <clears throat> All right. 
So it's going to be Dick Stewart, Clinton, and Canigliaro. So uh, it's three to one. Here goes. And you got a snake eyes. That doesn't happen very often. It's a ballpark versus Mayer. But then we got a 75. Right-handed batter does go to 77. So he does get the wheelhouse. He gets credit for the wheelhouse. One to 56. Dick Stewart's going to get a hold of one. He did hit 33 home runs. So he's got good power. First baseman, Dick Stewart, with good power, 33 home runs in 1964. So we are going to pull a card and see what happens. It's going to be a 65, and that is line base hit. So he's on with a single. Could have been worse. Wheelhouse pitch that he missed, but he gets a single out of it, and here is Clinton. Lou Clinton, not a good guy to uh, – to hit and run with, he strikes out a lot, so we're not going to hit and run with him. Here's a pitch from Mayer. That is a nine. It's a patient, a patient 25 against a lefty. That's a base on balls. So now Mayer is getting himself into a little bit of a predicament, allowing both runners to both uh, leadoff runners to uh, hitters to to reach here in the bottom of the seventh. It is first and second with Tony Conigliaro. All right, I don't hit and run usually with first and second. I may want to bunt with him. He is uh, an F bunter, so maybe not. So in this case, I would just kind of hit away. Um, some guys hit and run with first and second. I normally don't. I'm like a first base or first and third hit and run guy. And that is going to be a five. A five is a tough, and a 22 is a strike three. And Canigliaro goes down swinging at a curve, one out. So he's got a big courage, Bob Mayer, to throw that curveball with runners on first and second. And uh, here's Tillman. Pitch. And that is a six. A six is in play. This could be a double play. I don't know. And an 82. An in play against the lefty, 82. And that is going to be a grounded a shortstop. Now, you could use this number. All right. And I will use that number. It's a six. Um, it's recommended to use that number. You don't always have some guys like to roll separately, but I want to minimize the rolling, so I'll use that six. Bob Mayer is a seven. Oh, I almost wrote on that. Let me just so the DP, I've explained the DP before, but I'll explain it again. So the pitcher is a seven. Double play, right? This is the double play. And the batter, Tillman, is a six. So six or less, because that's the lowest number. So six or less is a double play, and it is double play because we roll a six, and that is a six four three double play, and that retires the side. So I've done a double play a couple of times now. You basically have to find the lowest number, and if it's below that. It's a double play. If it's above it, it's a fielder's choice up to 11 and 12, and that, that would just be a throw to first. So there you go. All right. So we go to the top of the eighth inning. So you know why I need to continue to do these? Because a lot of times I think, oh, everybody understands it. But no, I hear a lot of guys who are not playing their games right. And when I talk to them, I say, oh, wait a second. I was playing it this way. And I'm like, no, that's not the rules. They kind of misinterpret the rules all the time. Now, I'm not saying I'm perfect. I make my mistakes, but I try to learn when I learn that, hey, that's not the way it is. I try to adjust, and most guys do that. But th these these tutorials are critical, I think, for that. Um, Mom Bouquet and, uh, versus Roger Maris. And Maris is, what is he? He homered. He's two for three today. Maris uh, is a right 300 hitter versus righties. He's 230 hitter versus lefties. And it's a 10. A 10 is a patient. And a 17. Is this the 8th? Oh, Mambuquet is a fatigue card. Yes, sir. He just remember that. Because he gets fatigued. He's already allowed three runs. So we're going to get a fatigue card from Mambuquet. And that doesn't mean, you know, anything major. It means that he's going to, you know, be susceptible to a few things. But uh, 404, this is close enough. This fatigue card is close enough. He's got a four, and that goes up to the 399. So that's close enough. I'm not going to kill myself. All right, so this is his fatigue card, Mambuquet. So I'm going to leave his name showing like that. 
What I do like to do is kind of put these in a protective uh, cage. Yeah, I'll show you what I use just because uh, they're easier to control. So my bouquet is there and it's the ultra card card sleeves for the baseball cards. All right. Um, so we've got uh, top of the eighth inning, it's Roger Maris. And we rolled a 10, which is patient, a patient 17. Uh, and that is against a righty. That's going to be a base on ball. So Maris walks. Maris walks. And it's Mickey Mantle. Now, uh, with Mickey, not going to try hit again to left. Yeah, we try hit and run, but not against the right. Here goes. And that is a nine. A nine is in play. Uh, 97 in play. 97 versus a righty. That's a fly ball left field. Can of corn out there with the left fielder, Mistrzemski. Next is Tommy Tresh. And he is a good hit and run guy. Oh, not against righties, though. It's very high uh, strikeout. So I don't want to hit and run with him either. I showed you how to hit and run once in this video. And I'm kind of doing all the things. Now, I don't normally do all these things. I just, just think them. I don't say them out loud. But I, uh, 30. Now, that's a wild pitch opportunity. 30, 31. Those, usually 30 automatically. Uh, it's a wild pitch. And this is a wild pitch. So going to second is Maris. And Tom Tresh. We're going to roll again for Tommy Tresh. Here goes. Starting to get clumsy toward the end of the game, top of the eighth inning. And that is a four. A four is in play, in play 93. And that is going to be a fly ball left field again, and that is Yastrzemski. Two out, and here comes Joe Pepitone. This is the Joe Pepitone replay, by the way, 64. And um, he's 0 for 3 today. Here's a chance to drive in a run, Joe Pepitone, the lefty. Here's a pitch from Mombaquette. And that is a an eight. An eight is a patient and a 60. A patient, 60 versus a righty. It go, only goes up to 33. And uh, so that's going to be a 60. It's going to be a ground ball to short. Glove by Brasseau. And he throws the first to retire the side. We go to the middle of the eighth inning. So Pepitone's going to go 0 for 4 today, unfortunately. You see, the, the fatigue card isn't the end of the world. I use it, and it just but it just he did give up a walk and a wild pitch because it was that. So here's the pitcher now. Now we're going to pull the pitcher for pinch hitter. And um, let me look quickly at replay baseball roster so I know who's the pinch hitter. Uh, there it is. Resume game. Replay Radio is live from Boston. Top of the first. All right. Okay, so let's see where we are. It was a six four single single walk. And we're looking for a pinch hitter now. So it's so just gonna walk and uh, and it was a it was choice. Oh I I got it. Let me go back. Six three, that was a four three. Hold on a second, I'm getting to the part where I can see the, all the uh, the uh, rosters real quick here. So then it was a so walk. All right, let me let me look and see who Boston can bring up the pinch hit. Against a lefty, they're going to bring a guy named Mantia. Mantia Hun. 
Let me see if I can find the Boston Red Sox. Where are they? Where did I put them? That's the question. Here they are. Uh, no, it's not them. Ah, here they are. Boston's back here. Oh, we're bringing a guy named Mantia. He's Felix Mantia. And he will hit for the pitcher. So we'll put that to the side. And uh, then we're going to get a new pitcher. And let's see who the pitcher is going to be. Actually, a double sack walk. Let's steal. All right. There's a walk. Hold on one second, just getting some information real quick. Um, you gotta get through this inning. You know, it's not much fun left field. That was a caught stealing. Two, two, four. Okay, so um, let's see who we're gonna bring into. It's gonna be uh, Hefner. Hefner's gonna come in to, to pitch. Let's see if we can find Hefner. Oh, I don't have Hefner. So, Charton is another guy, a guy named Charton. Oh, I do have Hefner. So Hefner's gonna come in, gonna remove the, the fatigue card, and we're gonna put that fatigue card back in that pile, and put the pitcher hitting card back in the pile. All right, so we got a pinch hitter here. What's the situation? The situation is, First and so, no, we have a pinch hitter in the bottom of the eighth inning for the pitcher. So we're going to put that in there, and it's going to be Mantia. Pinch hitter. All right, let's do this. Here's a pitch from Bob Mayer. And that's an eight. An eight is a tough, a tough 25 against the lefty, and that is going to be a base hit. Mantia with a pinch hit single to lead off the inning. All right, so the Red Sox have a base runner. Now I'm going to try, stay out of the double play. I'm going to try a hit and run versus a lefty. Mm, 41, that's not, this one's better for so. So let me, let me just uh, hit away with Chuck Schilling. Here goes, pitch from Mayer. All right, that is a 10. 10 is in play, 74. An in play, 74. And um, he's a lefty, and a 74 is going to be a fly ball center field. Now I'm going to try to hit and run. And I just play by here, see what happens. Okay, so here's Brousseau. There goes the runner. Here's the pitch from Meyer. That's going to be a six. A six is in play, and then play 59. And then play versus a left 59, and a 59 is going to be a fly out to right. See, I don't have to check the chart. So back to first goes Mantia. And here's Kari Skrimski. Kari Skrimski hit uh, 15 home runs, so you can get a hold of one here and tie up the game. It's 3-1. to one. Yankees, bottom of the eighth at Fenway Park in Boston. Here's the pitch to Skrimski. Oh, a 12 is wheelhouse. Just what the doctor ordered. A wheelhouse. Now, it does say a 30. It does say a 30. So that means it's a wild pitch. So you see, that's what's tricky. Now, but it's all, you're also, according to the rules, you're also su supposed to play that number. Okay, according to the rules, you play that number. But if you play that number, you can't have a wild two wild pitches with the same batter at the plate, and that's kind of unrealistic. All right? So what do you do in this case? Because you just robbed you just robbed your strength of a home run because of a wild pitch. So going to second is Mantia, and Yaz is still up. So we have to, we're forced to roll again because of the 30. All right, and that's going to be an eight this time. That's a tough against a lefty, a tough 
24, strike three, and that retires the side. So unfortunately for the Red Sox, things did not work out, and we go to the top of the ninth. We have a new pitcher on the mound. We'll be facing Howard Mayer, Howard uh, Boyer and Mayer. And his name is Bob Hefner. He was uh, seven and nine. Uh, no, he was yeah seven and nine with a four hundred eight ERA. And here's Elson Howard. Top of the ninth inning. Here goes. And that's a seven. A seven is in play. Twenty one against a righty. Twenty one in play. That's a base hit for Howard. Little ground ball to Miller and through in the center field. That is his fourth hit. He's four for four. Elston Howard's having a day of his life. Now versus righties, he batted 298 versus lefties 338. So he's a hitter. Here's Clayton Boyer. And that's an eight and a 35. A tough, a tough 35. That's a strikeout. Boyer swings and misses. And he heads back to the bench. Now we're going to bunt. The pitcher bunters are usually, um, it's on his card. Mayer, this is his bunt. He's an A bunter. <clears throat> so I'm just going to pull a card. <clears throat> Look at A on the left side. Bunt section says SH. That's good. The third baseman. Over to first. To the second baseman covering. And that's a sack. Runner on second. Howard the second base. Is Howard at least a six, I hope? Yeah, he is. So he'll score on a single. So here's Pedro Gonzalez. Pedro Gonzalez, one for four. Two outs, runner on second. Three to one game, Yankees. In the top of the ninth, that's a 10. 10 is in play, and a 15 is going to be a base hit, and a round to score is Howard. And the Yankees take a four to one lead. RBI single for Gonzalez. First base coach gives him a high five, and here's Bobby Richardson with two out and one on. Here goes. Here's the pitch from there. That's a six, a patient, a patient 12. That's a base on balls. That puts runners on first and second in a four to one game. Now Hefner is a short reliever. He can go two innings. So I'm going to try to play him another, another batter here. Pitcher was... Uh, All right, here's a pitch to Roger Maris. That's a five is a tough, and a 90 is a ground ball second base. And that is Schilling up with it over to first, and that retires the side. So it's one run on two hits, four to one Yanks go to the bottom of the ninth. And Mayer's going for a complete game. I usually check to see how many he has. He only started one game, and it was this one. Seven games, one game started, no complete games. So you know what? Based on that and try to play realistically, I would say, okay, let's grab the Yankees. Let's grab a um, – I'm looking for the Yankees. Let's see what I'm doing. Good enough. Okay. So under some paper, under some. Uh, so we're gonna bring in. Who are we gonna bring in? Hector Lopez. Steve Hamilton is he a reliever? Thirty games. Let's look and see who the uh, who the Yankees have. That's gonna be in the second inning. It was home run. All right, uh, they're going to bring in a guy named Reniff. Let's see if I can find him. He hasn't been in the game yet for the Yanks. Hal Reniff is going to come in and finish it up. 
just become Bob Mayer. I let him bat. Um, let me if he gives up if he allows one base runner. Okay, I let him bat so he can try to finish the game. So let's try to do that. Here goes. And that is a nine. A nine is a patient. Zero eight. A patient. Zero eight versus the lefties. A base on balls. And Malzone walks, and that's going to be it. So it was Mayer until the the bottom of the ninth, and now it's going to be Renniff. So here comes Renniff. There goes Mayer. And uh, runner on first. Tying run is on deck. And on deck is it's Stewart, Clinton on deck, and then Conigliaro in the hole. Here's a pitch, and that's a 10. 10 is patient. Patient 73 against a righty. That's going to be a fly ball to center. Mickey Mantle. Over and makes the catch. Squeeze it for the out. One away. Here's Lou Clinton. Pitch from Hal Renneth. Hal Renneth was 6 and 4 with 312. Nine saves. He will get one here. That's a 5. A 5 is in play. 64 in play against a righty. And a 64 is going to be a ground ball to second base. This could be a double play with that 5. The number there is a 6. It's below that. The number there is a 10. This is going to be a 64. It's going to be a 4, 6, 3. They turn it. And the ball game is over. Thanks with a double play to finish it off. And their defense comes through for them. And that's the ball game, guys. Final score, Yankees 4, Red Sox 1. Um, it's a really great game. Easy and fun to play. Uh, check out my other tutorials on payoff pitch, just specifically for different things. And um, this is Tony Porter, Cards and Dice TV. Thanks for the guys who came by to say hello, and, uh, and we're just ch chilling out and watching. And I will see you guys soon. Adios.